Welcome to America, everyone. Sober O'Neill of G&A Reviews here with the servant spotlight for the Prezi King himself, Thomas Edison. We'll be examining his stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize them effectively, and an overall grade comparing him to how he stacks up to the other four-star servants. I also have a spotlight for Jean Alter and an event guide for the upcoming Da Vinci and the Seven Counterfeit Heroic Spirits event, so please do check those out right after this. Now, on to Edison's stats. Edison has a max HP of 11,882, which is average among 4-star casters and pretty high overall among all 4-star servants. His max attack of 7,952, however, is the second lowest among all 4-star casters next to Media Lily, and in the bottom 5 among all 4-star servants overall. Taking a look at his skills, his first skill is Morph Rank C, which increases his defense for 3 turns between 16-24% to 24 depending on level. His second skill is Mass Production Rank A, which grants him between 5-10 to 10 crit stars per turn for 5 turns, and increases his Noble Phantasm Gauge per turn between 5-10% to 10 for 5 turns, both depending on level. And finally, his last skill is Concept Improvement Rank A+, which increases the Noble Phantasm Overcharge level by 2 of an ally for 1 turn, and increases that ally's critical star drop rate between 10-30% to 30 for 1 turn, depending on level. Taking a look at his passives, he has Item Construction Rank EX, equivalent to D, which increases his debuff success rate by 4%, and Territory Creation Rank EX, equivalent to V, which increases his Arts card effectiveness by 4%. As for his deck and Noble Phantasm, Edison has a full-on Caster Arts deck with Quick Arts 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 Buster and an Arts Noble Phantasm. His Noble Phantasm is World Faith Domination, which deals heavy damage to all enemies with between a 450 and 750% damage modifier, depending on level. It also inflicts Noble Phantasm Seal and Skill Seal for one turn on all enemies, and decreases their critical hit rate between 10-50% to for three turns, depending on overcharge. This can be strengthened through an interlude, which will increase the damage modifier to between 600-900%, to depending on level, and will also add the effect of decreasing enemy attack for three turns between 10-50%, to depending on overcharge. Taking a closer look at his cards, we see that his quick card hits three times, his arch card hits three times, his Buster hits 3 times, and his Extra hits 5 times. He has a Noble Phantasm gain rate of 0.51%, and a star rate of 10.6%. Overall, this means he has average star generating and a good Noble Phantasm gain due to the 3 Arts cards and the 5 hits on his Extra. For everyone who was spooked by Edison while rolling for Coup, let me just start off by saying I'm sorry, but this spotlight might alleviate some of that pain, so don't call a doctor just yet. Edison is a pretty confusing and difficult to use caster. For one thing, his stats are absolutely dreadful. Casters are not known for their attack, but even by caster standards, Edison hits like a wet baby noodle. When you factor in the caster damage modifier, even Saber Lily is going to be hitting harder than him. And all he has to show for that weak attack is just slightly above average HP. But thankfully, casters don't need attack if they have good skills and can provide good support. In Edison's case, it's a mixed bag. Morph is completely pointless. Not only is it not a support skill because it's just self-targeting, it's also just a weak 24% defense buff. Morph usually only works if it grants upwards of 50% defense. For example, in Nursery Rhyme and Tamamo's cases, where it can cut a huge portion of damage for a turn, and it has synergy with their healing, but Edison has none of that. Mass Production is thankfully a much better skill it allows Edison to fit into a good niche as a crit star generator for arts teams. Generating 10 crit stars per turn for 5 turns is huge, especially if you stack it with 2030. It makes him a reliable crit star engine. And the Noble Phantasm gauge charge is also nice and it works well with Edison's already good Noble Phantasm gain. The only downside is the massive 10 turn cooldown at max rank. Given that the skill lasts 5 turns, that cooldown does make sense but it's still very long, so you won't be able to depend on this skill for half of your battle. And Edison's final skill, Concept Improvement, is his most notable and one of the most unique skills in the game. Being able to increase an ally's Noble Phantasm Overcharge by 2 can either be completely pointless or devastating depending on who you're using the skill on. But in either case, it gives Edison access to an extremely rare buff that no other servant has, and that we won't see on a craft essence for another year. The crit star drop rate buff on it also serves to stress Edison's appeal as a 
crit star generator and when it comes to skill leveling max mass production first because crit star generating is edison's best role and then you're going to want to max concept improvement for a shorter cooldown and stronger crit star buff and finally morph because it's just really bad edison's noble phantasm is another unique part of his kit it does deal damage to all enemies but it does so little damage it might as well do nothing the appeal of his noble phantasm comes from the fact that it will skill seal and noble phantasm seal all enemies this is great for harder boss quests and challenge quests and in late game because denying the enemy buffs and noble phantasm is essential and after the interlude it also decreases the enemy attack considerably for three turns and it's a completely viable option to use concept innovation on yourself to half the attack of all enemies and there are even a few ways to exploit this and spam your noble phantasm to perpetually stack the attack debuff or pair it with another attack debuffing servant like ku alter's frenzy of spirit skill at first glance edison seems pretty useless and he is for most things like attacking or giving direct support like most casters do but edison is designed to attack very specific niches in a very strong borderline op manner and in the right team he can be damn good there are a couple of teams that edison fits well in first and foremost he does well as a crit star generator for arts teams he can easily provide arts crit servants like assassin shiki nursery rhyme and orion all the stars that they need and as a caster you don't have to worry about him taking the stars for himself in most cases he also works well in stall teams where he can sabotage the enemy this makes him great alongside waver jean hans martha ku mosh marie and tamamo tamamo in particular is a strong pick since she can lower his long cooldowns enable him to spam his noble phantasm and stack the attack debuff and noble phantasm seal and she can also complement his star generating finally edison pairs well with anyone who benefits from having their noble phantasm overcharge mostly servants that get an attack buff from their noble phantasm like ku alter or that deal extra damage with overcharge like mave and gilgamesh or have some kind of strong debuff attached to their overcharge like nightingale who can by the way use her noble phantasm to give all enemies minus 50 percent attack giving edison and nightingale potential to give all enemies minus 100 percent attack for a turn just putting that out there edison's bondcraft essence is light of civilization which gives all allies a 15 percent increase to noble phantasm gain this is definitely strong on edison especially on a stall team that relies on noble phantasm spam if you're using him as a crit star generator though i heavily suggest giving him 20 30 and if you don't have that then be elegant can work and if you're using him more as a support or staller then i suggest giving him little halloween devil prisma cosmos or divine banquet to enable him to spam his noble phantasm as that's going to be his best use and overall edison is such a strange yet cleverly designed servant his weaknesses are many and they're very apparent he has very niche skills, he has lack of flexibility, extremely poor damage, no direct support abilities like an attack buff or a heal, and long cooldowns. And when it comes to everyday usage, Edison won't be the best option most of the time. He simply isn't a good choice for farming anything and doesn't do well with most other servants because he can't provide the type of support that they need. But what he can do, he does phenomenally well. He's one of the better arch crit star generators in the game. And he's built to be a strong piece in a stall team, making him a strong servant in challenge quests and for harder content like raid events. He can also pair dangerously well with some servants like Nightingale and Yagyu to the point of being almost OP. So overall, he gets a B from me. Edison has been the toughest servant I've ever had to do a spotlight on because his mechanics are so intricate and even now I'm kind of shaky on that rating. In most scenarios he's a C- minus tier in my book and 90% of the time you won't ever have a need for him but the other 10% of the time he can be almost an A plus level servant so I split it down the middle. And those are my thoughts on Edison. Hopefully that helps some of you out who rolled him and don't know what to do with him. And if I missed anything in the spotlight, let me know in the comments. Like I said, Edison's one of the more strange servants I've ever had to review. And personally, I'm still experimenting with him. Also, be sure to check out the Jean Alter spotlight and the Da Vinci event guide, both linked on screen right now and in the description. 
leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Ring that bell so you can join the notification squad and join the party over on our Discord, and I'll see you all in the next Spotlight. Soberoni out. Later.